Hey there, survivors. How's it going? I'm your host, Douglas here at Drawn Boy Productions, bringing you another Screaming Ghost Face Collectors video. And in today's video, we have some pretty awesome items, most of which came from our good friend, Nate Reagan over at Reagan Productions. And a couple of items actually were gifts from some other friends who sent them in. And uh, I guess we'll start with what I got first and then the stuff I got from them. And then we'll lead up to Nate's items because of course, whenever I have something come from Nate, you know it's something special. And today that happens to be the case. We have a couple of screen used items as well as some production pieces, but I don't want to spoil it, even though I'll probably do that with the title and thumbnail. So we'll just go ahead and hop right into the video. Starting off with what I picked up at Spirit Halloween. First up, we have the Glow in the Dark Ultra White, or as it's known currently, the Glow in the Dark Ghost Face Mask. Now, initially, a Glow in the Dark Ultra White mold could actually be found on the Collector's Edition mask. And essentially, it's pretty much what you have here, a glossy Glow in the Dark Ultra White mask. They also did release them in pretty much the same quality as what we have here with the regular polyester shrouds in a store called Asda. Those are known as the Asda Glow Masks. I actually had won a giveaway for one of those years ago and never received it, unfortunately. So I can't really compare these as far as quality wise, um, whether they're higher quality, the same quality, but regardless, these new runs look pretty damn nice. Spirit Halloween did offer these last year, and I believe they are exclusive to Spirit, but they are back again this year. And dare I say, the new versions are even better than the old ones. The paint seems to be a lot nicer and neater, at least from the ones that I've seen in the two stores I visited. And this is a nice copy here. But another reason I really like it, if you look on the inside of the mask, I think it is removable, should be easily removable. Now, this is not like super, super solid by any means, but nonetheless, it definitely helps the masks hold their shape. And as far as shipping, as far as being on display, personally, I think Fun World should use those for every single vinyl mask that they're producing. It'll help hold the shape. You won't have so many being just like completely flattened whenever they make it to the store. And I know that that's not every single mask, but it is something that we run into every single year. And it seems like these help a lot. Now, beyond being used for just these masks, I think these inserts could be very, very useful in many other instances, including putting it inside of masks that you already own that are misshapen. So yeah, I think Fun World should include these with pretty much every vinyl mask that they make because it's certainly helpful and it just makes it feel like it's a bit more worth the price. Not that it already wasn't, but I mean, for $13 with a plastic insert, that's pretty nice. All right, moving right along, the next item I picked up for myself was the Chrome Buck Knife. These are available pretty much everywhere that's selling Ghostface stuff at this point, but we did not know if these would make a return this year, and I'm very, very happy to say that they are back. Now, we did already see them in the catalog earlier this year, so I mean, at that point we knew, but after they were being sold last year, we didn't know if we would see these again or not. These are really, really cool knives, and if you haven't picked one up and you're a Ghostface cosplayer, or just in general you have a Ghostface collection, these are only like $10. All right, moving right along to the gifts that we received. Both of these came from two different collectors and two different friends of mine and friends of the channel. And I guess we'll start off with the one from Mindbro, AKA Porter. I should state that both of these were complete surprises. I did not know that these people were sending gifts at all. They just arrived in the mail. And uh, I really, really appreciate both gifts for different reasons. And I think you guys will see why. So from Porter, we have this April to June 2010 Glossy EU mask. For those of you who know the differences between the different runs, you would know that roughly around the time that Scream 4 was being made, they had a slightly different look to the vinyl and the mouth paint as well. They were very, very glossy masks, but still great looking masks. And that's what he has sent me here. Now, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. However, there are a couple of small issues. There's like a little blemish over here by the eye, no big deal. And then over here on this side of the mouth, there is a pink spot. I could attempt to use pink away on it and see if that cleans it up. And then I'll have a nice, pretty much brand new Scream 4 style EU mask that I can put on display on the Scream 4 prototype robe. Or I could make it blood splattered like the mask from Scream 4. So yeah, I'm back and forth on whether I want to try and clean it up and restore it to put it on display. 
or if I want to make it bloody so that I'll actually have a Scream 4 bloody ghost face mask. Being that it's already got the marks on it, I mean it would be the perfect mask to try it on. And you know what? I'll let you guys decide in the comment section down below. Should I try and clean this one up and get it nice and new again? Or should I go ahead and make it a bloody ghost face? Regardless, it's an absolutely gorgeous EU, and I greatly appreciate you sending that over, Porter. Moving right along to another really cool gift that I greatly appreciate that was also sent as a complete surprise. Here we have something I actually don't have in the collection and never have had before. This particular piece was sent in by Samir Ghazi, who is a massive collector of Scream and Ghostface. I'm sure many of you in the community already know Samir, and he sent me this very awesome piece. Here we have a replica of Roman Bridger's voice changer. Now, I have a couple of other versions of the voice changer, but one that I've never had is Roman's. And I was actually thinking about trying to pick up one of these soon, because of course, if you're gonna have a bunch of Scream and Ghostface stuff on display for a museum, you have gotta have the most iconic voice changer in the entire series. This little gadget has caused a lot of controversy amongst fans for all of these years, because this voice technology doesn't exist. That's not realistic. Well, now it is. This actually does exist. So I think that if they don't utilize something like this or bring back Roman's voice changer in Scream 7, that's kind of a waste. Because if we're making commentary about the times, about what's currently happening, this is kind of a real thing now. And it's pretty scary to a lot of people. Overall though, it is a very, very cool voice changer and a quick little story for you all. A few years back, I actually did almost end up getting the stunt voice changer that was used for Scream 3. However, the initial information I was given on it was that it was a prototype piece, not a Scream used piece. I told that to the person selling it. They ended up kind of disregarding it and then selling it to someone else entirely. Another friend and collector got it, which I'm happy to see. But I just wish I would have had a bit more solid information on that at that point in time, because I really, really came close to having one of Roman's Scream used voice changers. If I can find a picture of it, I'll go ahead and put it on screen now, and you guys will be able to tell why I also thought that it may have been a prototype piece. And uh, turns out there actually was another voice changer that was made for Roman's belt, which you never really get to see in the film, that is <laughs> very much so something you would not think is screen used. But nonetheless, this is a very cool replica. It doesn't light up or anything, but the back of it does open. So I presume I could put some LEDs in there if I wanted to, and I may just do that. <laughs> But I mean, that's no big deal. I can touch it up if I want to. And regardless, it's still a very, very cool replica and I greatly appreciate it, Samir. We'll go ahead and start out with the screen use pieces. And I do mean pieces this time. So here in my hands, I have not one, but two pieces of screen use props. You guys may know, I'm not a huge collector of swatches. I personally don't wanna buy them, but ultimately I do have two swatches here, and two very, very cool ones. I'll start with the less cool of the two. Here we have a piece of actual screen used Ghostface Hero fabric from Scream 4. This is pretty awesome. It's not a massive piece, but it is a piece of the actual fabric. And this is the sparkle version of the fabric, which if most of you watching don't know, there were two different types of robes that were screen used for Scream 4. They did have a mostly black fabric robe, but they did also have a few of the sparkle robes on set. The next one is definitely the cooler of the two. Here we have a piece of screen used ghost face robe from Scream 2022. Now, many of you fans, yet again, if you're in the know about this stuff and you pay attention to it, you live and breathe it, you would know that pretty much everything from Scream 2022 was destroyed or thrown away due to certain protocols. Now, since that statement was put out there, we actually have seen several screen used props and you know knives, certain pieces, some backup wardrobe, some actual wardrobe. We've seen some pieces like that make it out to the public. But so far, nothing ghost face robe or mask wise, unless it came directly through Fun World. This is a piece of the actual screen used robe. So as it currently stands, this is good as it's gonna get as far as owning a Scream 2022 screen used robe. And uh, it's certainly not a whole robe, it's just a tiny little swatch of fabric, but so if you are interested in this kind of stuff, Nate actually does have a couple of these currently on his eBay for sale. So if you go on eBay and look, you'll see some very similar looking frames like this. And I think I may be able to find those and put a link to them in the description down below. But the pieces that Nate is selling are much larger chunks of the robe than what I have here. But regardless, for gifts, 
I greatly, greatly appreciate this, Nate. It's very, very cool. It is a small piece of Scream and Ghostface history, but still very awesome. Next item for today's video is a pretty cool one. It is from production and they are exceedingly rare. Here we have a Scream 3 cast and crew hat. Now, I don't know which cast and crew member this came from. I forgot to ask Nate. Okay guys, Douglas from the future here, and I actually decided to ask Nate which cast and crew member this belonged to, if it was anyone in particular, because a lot of my stuff, it just came like off of eBay, or I got it from someone indirectly, and it wasn't tied specifically to a certain person. So I asked him, do you happen to know who this belonged to? And he told me, yes, it actually did belong to one of the stuntmen that played Ghostface in Scream 3. So that is really, really cool. Whenever I got that item off of Nate, I had no clue that that was the case, obviously, because here we are. But that is just incredibly awesome information. This is a cast and crew item that was actually owned and worn by Ghostface. Beyond that, Nate said he's still in contact with the guy, so I'm actually gonna be sending this back to Nate and he's gonna have him sign it for me. So that's just really, really damn cool, guys. This actually ended up being the coolest item in today's video by far. Um, yet again, I still appreciate the gifts that everyone sent in, but guys, I, I don't know what to say. It doesn't get better than that. I love you all. Thank you for watching and see you next time.